So thank you so much, everyone. Good morning. Um, the first things about this study came in my mind. It's a song that say, in this great future, we cannot forget the past. Uh, it's a quite famous song, and it's exactly the principle on why we look at this uh, study. HIV has been changing so much in the last 10 years uh, in terms of drug availability, monotherapy, triple therapy, viral load, point of care, CD4 count. But we felt that it was nice and probably a good exercise for us to have a look about what is our achievement in 10 years times, what has been done, what is the main outcome, and what could be a good lesson learned for the future, for future of our operation as well. Uh, so we decided to have the best way to do that could be probably a description of what is clinical, immunological and virological characteristic of the um, HIV cohort patient in Myanmar, where we are uh, working with MSF Swiss. Very briefly about Myanmar, it's a concentrated epidemic, as most of the country in southeast uh, uh, region. And the uh, highest prevalence is in people injecting drugs, men having sex with men, and uh, female sex worker. In the general population, it's just 0 0.5. MSF has been working, next year will be 25 years in Myanmar, but since 2004 it's collaborating with the MOH and especially with the National AIDS Program. There are two sections, there is MSF Switzerland and MSF Holland, the colleague from MSF Holland will present later on. While we as OCG, we are focused mostly in the southern region, in uh, Tanitari Division especially, that is on the border with uh, Thailand, and specifically we have a clinic in that way where we are treating HIV, TB and uh, recently also hepatitis C and any kind of co-infection. So when we decided to have this rationale, we also noticed that there was no much uh, literature available, especially in the long-term um, outcomes of, of ART project in low middle income country, obviously, and especially even less in Myanmar. So as I said, we, we think that we thought that actually describing the clinical immunological and virological through WHO staging, CD4 count and viral load would have given us some kind of information and direction about yeah, what, um, outcome, but also way forward. Um, for the one that are not familiar with the MSF family, we use a baseline characteristic from FUSHA database. FUSHA database is um, software where you have most of the information related with um, HIV and TB patient. We decided to get people from uh, August 2004-2006 until September 2015 and we obviously received the ethical approval from both MSF board and Ministry of Health in Myanmar. The numbers are what normally give the best um, answer to everything. And in this case, we have um, 615 people identified in this range of times, uh, of which almost 70% are still active in care or alive in care. And as you can notice, we have a big prevalence, I mean, big um, average of death, number of death. Later on, we will explain much better why there is some specific reason why it's so high. From the 68 percent, um, 418 patients are still in care, and just not just, but 385 they decide to participate in the study. Not all of them, because obviously we request the patient consensus. So, in terms of profile, as you can see, there is no big difference in men and women. 10, 11 percent is not um, a big discrepancy, I would say. And especially we are talking about adults, 20 to 49 years is the vast majority of our patients. The difference between men and female came when we are looking at number of deaths and loss of follow-up. It's almost, ma male are accountable for almost 70% of the old uh, deaths and the loss of follow-up from which we can expect that included probably also some deaths. This, is, um, this chart probably clarify a bit better why we have this um, 25%. As you can notice at WHO staging, staging, 
most of the active care, when they arrived, they were stage three and four. This means they arrive late at our clinic. That means that they access healthcare when they were very sick. And this is also reflecting number of deaths. 88% of the deaths happen when people were on this stage. This is, again, explained a bit better because even if you have a very good doctor, even if you have the drugs available, that is not always the case. Manage this kind of patient, it's extremely complicated. The same is for loss of follow-up. Again, as before, I think uh, it's possible that around these 28 cases, 80%, there is some death that has been not recorded. And as late presenter profile, we have also the CD4 that is less than 100 for 31% of, of the, the court. So I think we have a clear idea about how is the profile adult, probably male has more problems. Last year, a uh, colleague Janet also identified fishermen as key population, especially for the context of the way and late presenter, people arriving uh, very late. Sorry, uh, the last point I included as a kind of limitation of the study, because for almost 36% of the patient, we didn't have information. That was the time of uh, 2004, I hope, and I'm sure that in 10 years we improve a bit the ME system, but it's still uh, relevant to mention. So, what are the good news? The great important news for me is 96.8% of uh, patients have undetectable viral load. This is an amazing result. It's in line with WHO guideline of 90-90-90 target, but especially I think it's very important not for MSF specifically, but mostly for the life of the patient. It clearly demonstrates how it's possible to run a project in the low middle income country on an HIV program and having a significant impact on the life of the patient. The same is about CD4 count. Um, 548 cell, um, it's comparing with the beginning, it's a great achievement. Second line, it's not that high, but obviously still underline the fact that for the future, we still need to consider second and probably third line will be, become more and more important uh, in our project. And what surprised me more, uh, to be honest, is the mutation of resistance. We have just four cases of mutation in 10 years time in such a big cohort, I think it's a good result. The bad news, on the other hand, is mortality. Of that 25% that we saw at the beginning, 53% die in the first year. Again, it's a logical consequence of the late presenter uh, profile that we discussed before. But definitely it's something that we need to address. At that time, again, in 2004, probably there was not awareness, discrimination and stigmatization was an issue to access healthcare. The situation at the moment is getting a bit better, but we are not really improved that much. But definitely it's something that we need to keep in consideration when we are designing an HIV intervention. Just for, for the um, yeah, description, um, not surprisingly, and unfortunately, TB still remain very high comorbidity. It's almost 40% of our patients have high burden. And I want to stress also hepatitis C, especially in Myanmar, it's a context where uh, prevalence is pretty high, and in our cohort, it's more than 12%. We have the chance as well to treat now, fortunately, the disease. So to conclude uh, this part, I think it's very good. We can be um, happy or satisfied with 96% of undetectable viral load. Uh, we definitely need to work more on mortality rate, especially in the first year. And uh, comorbidity still remain a problem in, in the service that we need to move more and more to the integrated uh, service. And especially comorbidities, we decided to get just a quickly um, more detail on cryptococcal meningitis. Still in the same context, still in the same clinic, still the same uh, team working on that. Why cryptococcal meningitis specifically? Because there is high mortality, because number of cases in Southeast Asia is pretty high. It's the second highest after Southern African region. We're talking about under 35,000 cases uh, per year, according to CDC. And of course, from Myanmar, we don't have um, much or oh, no data. 
the analysis was more or less conducted in the same way. It's retrospective using FUSHA and also patient file to see um, the characteristic of this population. Although it's slightly different because we counted in terms of, of uh, procedure, we counted from November till November to 2004 till November 2050, the profile is more or less the same. As again, with not big surprise, we have uh, WHO staging 90 3 and 4 and 90%, CD4 count uh, low, lower than 100 at 85%, and mostly male. The, we have the chance also to make diagnosis both with in, in serum and in cerebral spinal fluid. These are the results. Very simple. I try to keep it as simple as possible. As you see, 80% it's between transfer out and death and uh, loss of follow up. And then you see there are two pieces of cake that looks exactly the same. It's number of dead and people active in care. I swear it's not a mistake, we counted three times with uh, epidemiologists, but it's exactly the same number. This means that mortality is pretty still very high for this disease, and we need to address this problem in our um, HIV court. What we try to do it is to improve the treatment first. Diagnosis is more or less okay, but in 2000, uh, March 2014, we introduced um, amphotericin B together with fluconazole. Um, since now, nine patients, only nine patients, fortunately, they, they've been treated with no side effects. Uh, we know that there is a lot of resistance in using amphotericin in clinic, but we have experience that it's possible to manage also at very um, in remote area. So the conclusion is like, we finally be able to show some result in the high mortality of crypto of um, cryptococco. There is again high mortality in our cohort, and we look forward to have an implementation of amphotericin B also in uh, lower uh, service in clinic. I want to thank the team, the old team.